So inside of Format, one of the first things that I might want to start doing is getting the satellite photography, this aerial photography here, out of Format and into a format where I have something that I can use as an overlay on my drawing board, but not just an overlay that um, has this basic information on it, but an overlay that I can actually work at a specific scale. Uh, you know, it's nice to start drawing over the top of this and have something that is proportionally correct, but having something that I know if I measure across this edge that I have a dimension that I can be roughly accurate with and not have to sort of guess at what my scale is. So I want to get this satellite photograph out. I also want to get it at a higher resolution. You know, if I zoom in, all of a sudden, cars don't become cars. They become sort of pixely blobs. I want to get this at a higher resolution, and I want to know exactly a scale to work with this image at. So I'm going to have to do a combination of things. First of all, inside a format, and then we're going to move it to Photoshop and get the file ready to print out at a specific scale. So let's go through those processes, those steps, really quick. Um, warning, it's going to involve math, OK? Um, but we've consolidated the math into an Excel spreadsheet that I'm happy to share with you um, so you can have an easier time working through it. And, and again, other warning, um, if you're doing math and you're using English units like we are in the US, um, which is ridiculous, by the way, um, the math is a little bit more complicated because you have fractions involved. Um, but we'll work through it. And again, if, if it goes a little bit over your head, uh, and again, the math isn't that complicated, but if it goes over your head, um, you can kind of trust the Excel spreadsheet or find a visual way to do the same kind of thing. So first step that we need to do, we've got this satellite photograph, and we need to know the dimensions of this. Again, this is at a one-to-one -one scale. So if I measure something, I know that it is close to being dimensionally accurate. Now, this is nowhere close to being what you need in terms of a land survey. But for conceptual work, um, it's going to be spot on. It's going to be what we need. So inside of Format, there's a measure tool. So I'm going to select that and measure. And if you notice, it's going to snap to my grid. And the further I zoom in, the denser my grid gets. But my image definitely does not align with the grid, even when I'm zoomed in fairly close. So let's momentarily turn off grid snapping. So that's going to be right here in Settings, turning off Snap to Grid. And I'm going to start my dimension tool, measure. And I'm going to me measure across this image. So I'm going to start with my cursor on the edge of my image. I'm going to zoom out and zoom over. I'm going to keep my inference locked. So my inference is um, either in the x-axis or, which is red, the y-axis, which is green. So I'm going to make sure I'm locking straight across this. And I believe, um, oh, not that. Don't want to use set length. Um, as I come across, as long as I am close to being on that x-axis, you're going to see that red line pop up and sort of lock in. So let's zoom in just a little bit, go right to that edge again. So I'm 1,945 feet, really right on the dot. Um, you know, I can move that this way, that way, or the other. Um, but I know, you know, I'm, I'm kind of playing not in absolute dimensions, but in very rough dimensions. So I'm going to say that 1,945 feet is really right on where I want to be. I can move my cursor one pixel in a direction, another pixel in another direction, and vary that dimension. But 1,945 feet is going to be right on where I want it. OK, I'm not going to pay attention to that 8.5 inches um, because I'm just not uh, at that level of accuracy in terms of doing this kind of work. Notice I'm doing an out-to-out -out dimension. I don't want to take a known dimension of something smaller, um, like a building or a road or a car. I want to take the largest dimension that I have. And if you notice, this is a square image. So this is going to lock in um, the dimensions both on the x-axis and the y-axis in terms of when I use that import satellite image button. So I'm going to lock that in my head, 1,945 feet. The next thing I need to do is get this image out of format so that I can bring it into Photoshop. And to do that, I need to be out of perspective view. So I'm in a perspective view right now. 
I'm going to click on the top view button to get a plan view. And I'm simply going to hit print screen on my keyboard. And then I'm going to jump over to Photoshop, File, New, OK, Edit, Paste. And there's my image. So let's go ahead and crop my image out. And I'm going to do this in two steps because I want to be pretty accurate with this process. Again, we measured edge to edge on the image, so I actually want to crop as close as I can to the edge of that pixel. So, you know, I'm not here or here. I'm really trying to get just about on the edge of that pixel. I'm going to hit enter and then select and see if I have any yellow edges left. You can see I've got just a little bit left across here. And that's off enough for me um, that I do want to go ahead and edit that one more time. And if you have a little trouble with snapping in Photoshop, remember you can use Control and sort of on the fly, that's going to turn off snapping inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to bring that edge in and then let's scroll down really quick and get that side in and just eliminate those last couple of pixels on each edge. Double click the pan tool to bring that up front and center. So um, I have this and again, it's proportionally accurate. Um, so in other words, everything relates correctly, but at my 1 to 100 scale, um, I don't have any idea if this is going to measure out, you know, 11 and a quarter inches approximately, if that is anywhere close to my 1 to 100 scale that I actually want to output this at. I also know, you know, if I zoom in a little bit here, that is really pixelated. That's, that's almost too difficult to begin even thinking about measuring across this. So I want to be able to swap out some higher resolution satellite imagery to help replace this, which is a little bit of work, but, but not too rough. Um, also of note, you know, inside of Formant, I can hide my axes, this sort of red line and green line, the x-axis and y-axis, but I know I'm going to be swapping out this image for some higher resolution photographs from Google Maps. So really, it's to me, it's perfectly fine to just go ahead and leave it on there. And that's also going to give us a little bit of a clue in terms of what we've replaced and what we haven't. So math, let's open up Excel. I know that, again, my dimensional input is 1,945 feet. If I wanted this at 1 8th scale, what I have set up is a numerical input. 1 inch equals 8 feet. So this would be a 1 8th inch scale drawing. If I go to my scale factor, I essentially have 1 over A2, so 1 inch over A2, which is 8, multiplied by 1 12th, or basically I'm converting this number into inches because I need my units to match up, um, inches to inches, and right now I'm inches to feet. And I'm simply doing that because it's an easier number to input in terms of remembering architectural scale factors. So that gives me a scale factor of 1.4125%. So if I input a numerical value here, 1,945 feet, all that I need to do to get my output, how many feet I should have in terms of my drawing, I can multiply this field, 1945, or field F2, by this percentage, B2, and get that output of 20.25 feet which is kind of a large architectural drawing. So I know that I don't want to be at an eighth inch for this scale for something this size. In fact, I, what I really want to be at is one inch equals 100 feet. So simply by changing that, everything's going to update across the board. So now I know I have 1,945 feet scaled down at one to 100 is going to be 1.62 feet. You know, or uh, converting that one more time into inches, and I'm doing that simply by G2, this number right here, multiply by 12 to convert to inches, 19.44222 inches. 
what this is going to do is that image that we just brought in, if I change the size of that image to 19.44222, that is going to roughly give me, and roughly you know, I'm comfortable with the accuracy of that, that's going to give me a scale factor of that drawing that I can measure things that's going to be right at 1 inch equals 100 feet. So I know currently I was 11 inches in change, I believe. So I'm going to upsize that image, which is going to further de-resolution it. But I want to do that as my first step before I start replacing images from Google Maps. So we're going to lock that in our brains, 19.44222, and go back into Photoshop. Then I'm going to go to Image, Image Size. Again, our width and height are almost matching, so we're going to go ahead and change that width to 19.44222 and say OK. I now have an image that is to scale. And if I were to measure across this parking lot right here where our site is, I'll have um, an image that is, uh, or I'll have uh, a dimension that's going to line up with the size of the building. So let's look at one more task before we close out this video, and that is beginning to replace some of these images with higher resolution quality satellite photography. And we're going to simply go to Google Maps to bring in a little bit higher resolution. Google Maps. So selecting on Google Maps right here, we're going to again put in the same address, 19th and Main. Kansas City, Missouri. A couple of things that I want to do. Um, for right now, um, I'm going to want to close out um, a few key labels, things like that. I'm going to switch this to my satellite Earth view. I'm going to collapse the side panel. And we are going to turn labels off and we are going to turn 3D off because what we really want is just the satellite imagery. And I can get crazy, I can zoom way, way in, but if you notice, it's not really changing the resolution a great deal. Um, it starts popping out right around here. You can see the different image popping in and out based on uh, how far I'm zooming in. So I know something like this is going to get me a fairly high resolution image. I'm going to use the exact same trick that I've been using. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more and let's swap out this entire block for the block that I have currently inside of Photoshop. So again, I'm going to hit print screen, back in Photoshop, file new, OK, edit paste. I'm going to use my selection tool and go right down the center of the street because that's sort of a safe place where I can crop things in and out. Edit, copy, back to my scaled version, edit, paste. So paste is going to give me a new layer. You can see my resolution is much higher. Um, it's giving me a brand new layer over here in my layer stack that I can turn on and off. And specifically what I want to be able to do is we're going to turn the opacity down a bit on this so I can see underneath it. And I'm going to move this over the top and I'm going to drop the scale down. Um, so again, on my appropriate layer, edit, transform, scale. I'm going to hold down the shift key to make sure that I'm scaling proportionally. So I'm going to drop the scale down. And I'm going to place this right over the top of the imagery. And I'm going to get it close. I'm going to do this sort of in two passes. And again, you can get really, really anal retentive with this. I always go just a little bit larger before I zoom in because again, dropping pixels down, I don't de-res nearly as much as scaling up. Scaling up, Photoshop has to invent information 
scaling down is just going to edit information out. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and come in again and go edit, transform, scale. Again, I want to hold down shift when I'm doing this to keep my image proportions locked. And again, I can use sort of these edges, these cars right here to make sure I'm, I'm locking things in really well. Um, usually these images will match up, not always, but usually they match up pretty well. scale that up, hit enter, and now you can see that I'm getting a much higher resolution image replaced right over the top of this. And so again, I just continue to repeat that process, generally keeping things right about that block scale um, to up res this while maintaining the integrity of that 1 to 100 scale. And that's going to give me a higher resolution image to work with and to print out.